Hi, everyone. Dr. Elizabeth Bonet here. Dr. Liz, welcome to the Hypnotize Me podcast. Before we jump in, please note that the podcast is not mental health treatment, nor should it replace mental health treatment. If you need psychotherapy or hypnotherapy, please seek treatment from a trained professional. I do hypnosis all over the world, so please feel free to contact me through my website, drlizhypnosis.com, D-R-L-I-Z hypnosis.com. Hi everyone, Dr. Liz here. I want to let you know before we jump into this fantastic interview with Christy Whitman that the Sleep Better, Feel Better program is starting May 5th, 2020. This is an online group and we're going to meet live and work on your sleep problems so that your life is transformed. Believe me, I know how hard it is when you're not getting good sleep. I struggle with insomnia a lot of my life until I found hypnosis. And then I really found like I had a tool that could help me sleep better, feel better, wake up, looking forward to the day ahead. So just go to drlizhypnosis.com slash sleep better, and you'll find the details about the program there. I hope to see you there. Now, this interview with Christy Whitman was so much fun to do. She is internationally known as a channel, which I find fascinating. I was like, oh my gosh, I get to speak to an actual channel and see what it's like because I am obviously not a channel. (laughs) So I just enjoyed the whole interview. So she is internationally known. She does all kinds of free webinars if you want to jump on one of those after hearing the interview with her today. She has published five or six books She has a new one coming out next year in 2021. And then on top of that, she offers all kinds of programs. She offers courses that you can take on her website as well as individualized programs. So she is quite impressive with the amount of work she does with having like two kids and a husband and all of that. So go and make sure you check her out. So we start off pretty general, but then we get pretty specific because I wanted to ask some questions about my own life and my own daughter and and look at a particular struggle that I was having with her. And Christy is really helpful in that. So you don't want to miss that if you have kids of your own. So I hope you're all staying healthy and safe during the pandemic. I know I have listeners all over the world and this pandemic has affected every single country in the entire world. And I am meditating on your well-being almost every day. Occasionally I miss a day here and there. I have no idea if it affi- if you feel it, but I believe that it affects you positively. I picture us all connected by strings of light and well-being filling your body, regardless of whether I know you in person or not. I have images that pop into my mind of my listeners, some of them more specific and some of them more vague. But I want you to know that there is someone out there that's meditating for your well-being and that cares about you. Thank you so much for being a listener. I really do appreciate every single one of you. All right. I hope you enjoy this interview as much as I did. Peace. Hi, Christy. Welcome to Hypnotize Me. I'm so happy to have, be here. Thank you for having me, Elizabeth. Yeah, absolutely. I am so excited about this interview. I have a lot of questions for you. And the first one is, I see that you had a son, Maxim, who had to have heart surgery. Yes, when he was two months of age, yes. What kind of heart defect was he born with, a heart problem, I should say? Well, he he's a, truly a miracle because he had a transposition of the great artery. And so when the doctors at two months of age were telling us about it, um, good 85% of the cases are found when the, you know, the baby's inside the mother and you utero and, and they find mm-hmm. it usually when they're doing the ultrasound. And if the, if the cases are not found, um, they usually find it immediately in the hospital because the babies look a little blue and mm-hmm. a good percentage, you know, another five or 10%, if you will, um, are operated on within like the first day of life. And Maxim was two months of, of age because usually if they don't find it within the first week of life, the babies die. 
Oh, wow. Yeah. And so um, they were, they had told us they, there was never a recorded um, history of anybody having this type of surgery at that old of an age because they usually pass that he had um, a hole between his two artery or his two um, valves. And then also mm-hmm. the, the the valve that um, basically closes once a baby's, you know, starting to breathe properly uh, yeah. and had their first couple of breaths, uh, it stayed open. And so those two points were the only thing that were keeping him alive. And um, wow. yeah, it was, it was truly a miracle story. And he, now he's nine and he's just the coolest little kid. And um, they did such a great job on his surgeries and different procedures that followed that he has um, his, his, the operation has completely grown with him. And, you know, obviously mm-hmm. he's going to still need to be followed every few years by a cardiologist, but um, he's, he's doing amazing. Wow. Awesome. I, I picked up on that. I have both my daughters have a heart defect, atrial septal septum defect. And um, my oldest one had to have surgery when she was about two and a half yeah. or so. They put a umbrella device in there. Oh, wow. And yeah. And so I know the feeling of like <laughs> wondering. She was diagnosed at like six months because it's not a, it's not as a severe problem that your son had, but it still needed to be fixed, but it's, they have to see cardiologists basically the rest of their lives. Right. It is scary. Yeah. It's scary as a mom. Cause you know, it's, you're so out of control and, and all you have really at that point is faith. And, mm-hmm. uh, you know, if, for me, that was the time to really practice what I've been learning all my life or uh, last 20 years. And, and also mm-hmm. what I coach people on is, you know, how to really focus on what you do want and, how you're going to want to feel and what you want the outcome to be. And there was no better time than that time when he got diagnosed that I I just turned to my husband and I said, okay, there's no other, we're not going to sit there and worry. We're not going to fear, you know, like if it comes up, let's process it, but we have to hold the vision that he's back home safely and that he's healthy and that he's growing up wrestling around with you and his older brother. And, and uh, my husband was like, got it. And I said, no other energy. Like if we go and see him while he's in the ICU, we can't bring any worry or fear energy with us. We have to be positive and, you know, let him feel us and tell him positive things. And nobody else is allowed to go in there if they're in worry or fear or any of that kind of stuff. And he was just like, I agree. So um, we just fed him with positive. There was no other option that he was going to get through this and that he was going to, you know, be healthy and and he is so fantastic, yeah. fantastic, really wonderful. So, how did you start becoming a coach? Well, let me rephrase that because now I know you say you're a coach. It says that on your website, but it's really a focus on energy mastery and manifesting. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah, I you know I found myself in my late twenties um, really having created everything, I accomplished everything that I set out to accomplish. I graduated from college. I, you know, was living in Chicago and I was, I had a really high paying job and, you know, I was responsible. I had, had had a career that I loved and I was living in a brownstone with my best friend and, you know, dating. And, you know, I had been in, in a relationship where I almost got married. I was engaged and realized that wasn't right for me. And, I just, I couldn't find my happiness. I couldn't find my connection. And when I looked at my life and you know, like I had my tight little fit body, you know, so I had money in the bank. I had everything that they, you know, society, my parents said that uh-huh. would make me happy. And, um, I just wasn't, wasn't that I was unhappy, but I just felt like, is this it? Like, is this what it's about? And I just started seeking and wanted to, um, discover more to this, universe and and to the purpose of being here. And it was interesting because I was started dating a guy that lived in California. And so I had a transfer with my company from Chicago to California. And when I got there, I didn't know anybody. I did, you know, I didn't have any friends. And um, he introduced me to his friend who was a hairdresser. And when I met Janine, she just had this light about her. And I didn't have that language back then, but there was something very different about her. It was like, she Mm -hmm. just had effervescent bubbles of joy coming off of her. 
And it was, it wasn't the kind of joy or happiness that I'd ever seen with anybody before. And so she's cutting my hair and I'm just kind of observing her and watching her. And finally I had to say to her, what do you do? Because you just are so different from so many other people. And she knew exactly what I meant. She said, well, I do a practice of of meditation called light body. And she started telling me about it. And I'm like, oh my God, who who teaches you that? And so she introduced me to her, um, her meditation teacher. And I was dialing Melanie's number as I was leaving the salon. I was just like, oh my gosh, Uh this is is it. (laughs) And, um, So when I sat in her house um, and we were talking, one of the first things she says to me, now keep in mind, Elizabeth, this was like over 20 years ago. This is to over two decades ago when, when like any, you know, there wasn't internet and there wasn't people on the internet. I mean, there was the internet, but there wasn't people on the internet talking about this. It wasn't like it was common knowledge. You know, yeah. it, it was like, it, it was in the, the books were in the, the very small part of a bookstore in the very, yes, you know, definitely. Yeah, right. it was like, you had to go <laughs> along like, with the yoga section. Yeah, exactly. You know? like, exactly. Tiny, exactly. Yeah. Or, or in like, you know, those like witchy kind of bookstores, you know, those like places where it, it just wasn't common knowledge. And so when, yes. when Melanie said to me, she said, you know, you're, you create your own reality. I just looked at her and I, I knew that to be true and I didn't know how I knew that to be true. And then she continued. She said, your thoughts create your reality and that you're either repelling things from you or you're attracting things to you based on how you think and how you feel. And I, again, I just knew that to be true. And somewhere inside of me, even though this is a first time I'd ever heard it and the first concept and I went, that's true. So how do I do that? And my first assignment was to pay attention to my thoughts and to pay attention. And that was the first time I ever thought that I'm not my thoughts. That, what do you mean? Like my, my thoughts aren't real. Like that's, Mm -hmm. my thoughts are true. true. They're there. That's what it is. Right. And so when I would just be the observer of my thoughts, I couldn't believe how negative I was. And I was just very judgmental and critical of myself, of everybody else. I mean, if I had opinion inside of my head about everyone and everything, including the universe and God, and, and it was just, it was all skewing on being negative and being in lack. Mm. And so I started to really um, pr- practice meditation, but more importantly, I started really um, shifting my thoughts from lack to abundance. And I started learning about that there are universal laws that govern our universe. And Mm -hmm. one of the things I realized that, God, it can't just be me that's so negative and so in lack. And I was seeing it everywhere that people I related to and people I talked to and the perspective of the media and everything, everybody was so in lack. Yes. Like once you see it, yes. you see it. Yes. It's like it just hits you in the face when someone's in lack or they're very negative or. Yeah. yeah. And so I started breaking down and learning for myself, like what makes someone in lack? Like when someone's thinking and how do they think, how are they, you know, what are they doing? How are they acting? What concepts? And so it was, it was interesting because it just became now my lifetime of learning and gathering information. So I was about five years in And, um, I remember one night I was really going through a huge spiritual growth and I was meditating and I saw my, a book cover say perfect pictures by Christy Whitman. And I thought, well, that's interesting because I've never written a book and it had like the exact, you know, cover that it has now and everything. And that night I went to bed and at one Oh five in the morning, I was woken up with this voice that was speaking so loudly inside of my head that I couldn't turn it off. I I was like trying to roll over and think of something else and it wouldn't go away. So I got up and I got a pen and I got my journal and I just started like writing what I was hearing. And then my hand became independent of my own consciousness. It was like, it started going super, super fast. And I was just scribing this information and, and it wasn't like I heard it and was writing it. Now my hand was just writing this stuff that I couldn't even keep up with. So Mm. I was up for a good couple of hours, went back to bed, woke up in the morning and went, wow, that's interesting. Read it and was like, oh my God, this is incredible. This is exactly what I'm needing to hear right now for myself. And so, Fantastic. yeah. And so, and so, what was your background in? Like, what kind of work were you doing? Well, I was, I was a uh, pharmaceutical rep at the time. 
Ah, okay. So it's not like you were in like an English major. Or, no, you know? <laughs> it was totally unrelated. Yeah. Okay. No, it, well, it is funny because my, my degree at Arizona State University was in communication. And so I, oh, okay. I graduated with a communication degree. And I was just saying this to my husband the other day. I'm like, it's kind of funny that I went to college to be in sales and marketing. I decided to switch majors. And then everything that I'm doing now, whether it's you know, pre- presenting, giving groups, like, you know, giving presentations, doing coaching, mm-hmm. interviewing, all these kinds of things is now what I learned in college. It's really kind of funny, but yeah, <laughs> full circle. Yeah, it is. It comes back around. Yeah. So, yeah. so long story short, my book got published because it became a book and cause seven nights in a row that happened. And then mm-hmm. when I started speaking, um, people asked me, uh, if I coach them. And back then, I mean, we're talking 19 years ago, almost 20 years ago. Yeah. Coaching didn't really exist. No, and yeah. it certainly was like a profession. And it wasn't yeah. cool. When I would tell people right. I was a coach, they would be like, what? Like, like a cheerleader? What is that? Yeah. Right. A cheerleading yeah. coach. <laughs> like, you know, and, and like a life, co- they go life coach. Like, who are you to give somebody else advice of their life? And I'm like, that's not what I do, you know? But, um, so yeah, I, I always say almost like that Barbara Mendrell song. I was country before w- when country wasn't cool. That's how I feel. I was, <laughs> yeah. I was coaching when coaching wasn't cool. So yeah, it's been about 19 years. And then in 2008, I got the download to, um, create my quantum success coaching Academy where I certify law of attraction coaches. And, uh, so it's just, so I, can I pause you there for a minute? Please. So did you, know about Abraham Hicks and Esther Hicks and Jerry, like all of that. Did you discover them around that time? Because I know they were around and they were really big in the law of attraction they were, world. Yes, they were. And no, I didn't um, discover them until about, I, I would say it was about 15 years ago that I discovered them. So I had, okay. I was gathering information. Like I learned from Terry Cole Whitaker and, and really uh-huh. like the church of religious science. I was learning all these universal laws. And of course, Louise Hay and Wayne Dyer and Marianne Williamson. And, okay. and then I was given a tape of Abraham and that's what uh-huh. my world just completely, you know, totally shifted. Yeah. And I was able to go yeah. on a cruise with them and, you know, been lifelong. Oh, awesome. Yeah. That's on my bucket list, a cruise. Yeah. We, we, my family and I have done many cruises with them. Well, what's funny, awesome. since we're going there, so now that channeling is what I would call it of my books. Yeah. All, of, all of my books have come through me in that way. Mm. Um and so now, a year and a half ago, I'm full on channeling. I was um, came out as a healer because that's something that I've always done is energy work on people when I'm coaching them. And mm-hmm. I just kept getting the downloads to create a program where people can just show up and whatever issues they're having, release the blocks, that sort of thing. And one particular day, it happens to be Max and the son that we were talking about because I have two sons, mm-hmm. um, his birthday in uh, 2018 all of a sudden the council of light came through. And so now mm. they come through every morning and uh, I do lots of programs with them where I'm giving information on universal laws. But more importantly, even beyond that is helping people heal blocks and, and things like that. So it's it's been a very interesting journey. So just, just, just when coaching becomes cool, I start to channel. <laughs> yeah, right. You're like, ah, oh, forget coaching. I'm channeling now. Um, was there any fear in you when like this started happening when you, like, how did you identify it at first? Cause you're saying my three books came through me this way. And it was this feeling of like, this is not my handwriting, but was there a, a point in time when you're like, Oh, this really isn't me. And I'm pretty sure this is the council of light. It's interesting because I never had any fears because it always just felt so natural and so real. It's kind of like when that moment I was sitting with Melanie and she said, your thoughts create your reality. I was like, that's true. Mm -hmm. And there was a comfort in that. And so from, from the scribing of the books, I've written six books. I'm actually on my seventh book. Um, all of them have come through that way. Um, you know, it's just a natural, it feels like inspiration. It just feels like it's something I cannot not do. I have to stop, just stop what I'm doing and allow the information to come through. But I'm so, I'm such a willing participant of it. I think that's why it continues to open and open and open because, you know, when, when I did that with my books and then all of a sudden it started happening with my healing where my hands would go up and, and that sort of thing, I didn't fear it. I just, it felt so natural and so good and, it, and I welcomed it. And that's where when, mm-hmm. you know, I full on started, like my consciousness went out and the, you know, councils came in, it, it just feels 
I, I mean, it feels incredible. And in the response that I get back from the people that are in the receiving end, whether it's in a class or in like a session, they just have information that nobody else could know. It's not, someone can't Google this information, right? And, yeah. mm-hmm. and so to be able to have that level of service and impact, I mean, it just feels amazing. Fantastic. That sounds beautiful. Thank you. Like this beautiful experience that you're having. I'm, I'm loving it. I, I remember saying I did, I used to do a big event for my coaches called the Quantum Success in Business. And I remember like, you know, preparing for it like six months in advance. And before I hit the stage, I was tired because I had already done so much for this event and I'd played it over and over in my head so many times. And when I got on the stage, I said, I have Esther envy because she just show, she shows up. They come in. <laughs> totally. She shows up. Right? Yes. <laughs> She's got a team that sets everything up. So she just gets up on yeah. stage, says, hi, bye, you know, and then yeah. I said, I had Esther envy. Well, here you go. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So are when you're doing these sessions, is it are you touring and doing these? Like can people buy tickets to them or is it one on one? Like how do you work? Oh, yeah, many different ways. So sometimes I do different tours, sometimes I'd go to different cities. Uh, a lot of times right now because I do still have young kids, they're 9 and 10, and most of my business has been online. I do a lot of online um where I do either uh, like a workshop, like a healing event, or I'll do um, mm-hmm. a class with them. Like they created the quantum, um, the quantum energy mastery course. It was just a complete download. They told me exactly what to do, what to teach. They come in and, and talk for the last half hour of the class and take questions. So I'm just being guided and I do a, um, a program mm-hmm. that's every, every week called the sacred circle of light where people just literally show up and talk about what happened with them this week or what's going on with them. And, and the council, you know, will, will help them release their blocks and, and uh, it's just incredible. So right now, most of it's online and I do one-on-one sessions with them, with people. Mm-hmm. So there's, there's a variety of things that we do together. Very cool. Yeah. Sounds wonderful. Nice. So what book would you say is the best one for people to start with if they want to know more about your work? Um, Well, The Art of Having It All is a really good place to start. I have The Art of Having It All is really about how to master your life as far as the universal laws are concerned. Um, Quantum Success is a great book. That's a very, I mean, the principles in there are tried and true, but it's more specific towards um, work and money. So if someone wants to increase their career success and make more money, then Quantum Success is a great um, book. The art of having it all is amazing too. Okay. But I'm I'm writing another book that I'm turning in the manuscript for this month called The Desire Factor, which I am just over the moon about because the council has obviously come through in a, a different way this time to bring forth the information. So that's gonna be coming out in the spring next year. Ah. And what is the desire? Was it desire principle or desire factor? The desire factor, yeah. What is the desire factor? Well, it's just that, you know, all of us, whenever we have a certain desire, it's coming from a place that's deeper than who we are. It's like, you know, we, we're the receivers of the desire. We're the receivers of the idea. And we can either get really excited and let the idea or the desire feed us and fuel us and inspire us and move in the direction and let the divine kind of lead the way. Or we could do what most humans do and go, well, who am I to do that? I don't know anything about that. Oh, I can't do, I can't afford that. Oh, I could, you know, the, the negative uh-huh. self-talk, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. And we have to recognize that every desire that we get is unique and different to me. You know, like I have no desire to run a marathon. I don't know about you, but I've never, that's never nope. been something that I like. Ooh, <laughs> I like watching them yeah. like on TV. <laughs> well, I, <laughs> I do I not want it. to run one. Like I was, and I was just having someone do my hair and makeup. She's like, oh, I'm training for a marathon. I looked at her and I'm like, good, good for you. That is amazing. Yeah. Like, I have no desire. Totally admirable. Yeah, yes. Exactly. <laughs> no desire. I have no desire to swim across, you know, an ocean. I have no desire to go camping for six months with a backpack on my back. You know, I, there are mm-hmm. things I just do not desire. They're not something that I've been re- given as something that would light me up. But the desire to coach someone or the desire to write a book or the desire to travel with my family, these are all things that I personally desire. And the specific places 
that I want to go and I want to do, you know, those are specific to me. And as long as I can allow myself to go, Ooh, you know, be, be excited by the possibilities of living in that place or traveling to this place or doing these things or having these things or being these things, you know, then the divine in me has the open channel to then co-create with me and create those things. But it's us that has to be open and not in the space of doubt or worry or fear or any of those places that we talked about, like the lack and the limitation of, oh, that's not possible for me. We have to be able to be that clear channel. What would be your biggest tip for someone to shift out of fear and worry? Well, we have to understand that our emotions are important, but you, we all need to learn how to become energy masters, masters of our lives. That's really what one of the biggest teachings that the Quantum Council of Light um, has to teach, and that you know, mastering our energy is really about understanding when we're having fears that come up, for example, and to allow ourselves to feel the fear, just to process the energy. If you look at everything from an energy perspective, when we get when we get like mired with oh my God, my life sucks, or why is it so hard, or oh, it's so difficult, why do I have to struggle so much? If we look at that as an energy pattern and we process out the emotions first and isolate them from the thoughts that created them and then are able to change the thoughts and dissipate the thoughts all from a place of energy, then those things don't continue to chronically come back and have us repeating that same thought pattern and worry and fear, whatever it is, to create the same situation. We tend to create the same kind of situations, whether it's financially or in our relationships or in our health or you know in our careers. There's always some kind of, again, lack, limitation, struggle, powerlessness um, to these different things. And we have to remember that those are just imprinted. It's not who we are. It's not our divine design. We're designed Divinely, it's coded into our system. Right now, I'm doing a meditation series um, to activate the divine codes with the council because we're divinely designed to have complete health and well being, to be vital and have energy, and you know, until the day that we transition, you know, to be in perfect health and to mm -hmm. to have abundance in all aspects of our life, in including financially. And to be able to be that co-creative partner with the divine, whether it's creating a book or creating a painting or a piece of music or you know a project or a business or a trip or whatever we're wanting, and to have it be success and to be, be have it be success in what we mean it to be successful, and then you know to having loving and supportive relationships, not just in one intimate relationship, but in all relationships with our kids, with our neighbors, with our in-laws, with our parents to have mm -hmm. love and support. And that's the way it's designed. And so if we're not manifesting or not having evidence of that divine design, it just means that we've been printed. We've been, another way of saying it is we've been programmed into a place where we believe in something that's not of that. And that's just energy. It's just an energy imprint. So is it a constant process of like turning your mind, shifting your thoughts. Like let's say you're having an ongoing issue. So so I have an ongoing issue with my 14-year-old who doesn't really like her stepdad that much. She liked him at first when I first dated him, but once she found out we were going to get married, she was like, oh no, you can actually sort of see her mind making the decision. No, okay? So I continue to try to be positive about it, but it's hard sometimes as a mom when she still says, no, I still don't like him. Like now she'll, she'll talk when he's around and things like that. So I can see her changing some, but when you, t when I talk to her in private, it's still very much like, no, don't like him. Okay. Mm -hmm. And for no real, well, that's my perspective for no real reason. If you ask her her perspective, which is really important, she'll say, I don't like how he chews. You know, right. like she doesn't like how I chew either. <laughs> but she hates like hearing people chew, like mouth sounds and he's too loud. It's things like this, right? So I sometimes get stuck in what do I do about this? So I constantly try to turn my thoughts to she's growing up. She's figuring out what she likes and doesn't like. Eventually she'll become an adult. Maybe she will like him. 
Um, but it's hard for me to think too, maybe she won't like him. Like that does creep in. So what do you suggest in, in terms of like a, something that's ongoing, let's say? Yeah. So, so remembering that everything is vibration and everything is energy. I mean, that's really the important thing is that when she is showing some kind of not liking him, where does it push your buttons and what are you making it mean within yourself? Because you don't have control over your daughter as much as we'd like to think we do. Um, right. no, and none. you know, and you, and, <laughs> <Pretty much. laughs> right. And you can offer, you know, cause maybe uh, there's maybe an imprint in her where she's angry or, you know, something's going on within her where she just wants you and her dad to be together. And, you know, that's why she doesn't want another man because if another man's in then, you know, but this is all stuff that's her stuff to her, for her uh-huh. to figure out. Right. So for you, while you're in this situation, is to understand when she says, I don't like him or when she, you know, first of all, if she's doing anything disrespectful, it doesn't sound like she is. At least she's being respectful in front of him. If she wasn't and there was behavioral issues, that's a whole nother thing. But I'm talking Mm -hmm. just energy wise, just inside of you for you to shift the situation is literally mm-hmm. to become neutral, whether she likes him or not. Again, if he's if she's being disrespectful, that's one thing. But if she's being respectful and she just doesn't mm-hmm. like him, then it's like, okay, inside of you, where can you be neutral? Does she really have to like him in order for you to be happy? Does she really have oh, to? I got it. Yeah. Yeah. The fear in me comes up of she'll go to college, never visit me. You know, like I'll never see her again when she leaves her college. That's the fear. So it's shifting away from the fear place and into a neutral feeling as much as I can. Yeah, it's it's you get to have your relationship with your husband and have it be as loving and supportive as you want it to be. Let not letting her influence change that dynamic, and and you allowing yourself to be happy no matter if she likes him or not. I, this is a very minor, I mean, I, I just wanted to give you an example of how this works. And I was teach, I was sharing this with my son. We went to the um, hockey game, professional hockey game on Saturday night. And there was these mm-hmm. two very, um, we'll just say very loud. I'm, I'm not going to judge them, but they were very loud and they were swearing a lot next to my son. And so, mm-hmm. and, and he was kind of, the, the two of them that were this couple were yelling over us to the left of us to this, these other people who were very loud and swearing and were like yelling at pay- players and all this kind of stuff. Yeah. And I'm, and I'm like, Oh brother, I'm like, okay, now's the time to get neutral. And so my son, Alex is sitting next to me and he's like, mom, they're so loud. And I'm like, honey, we're in a public place. We're at a hockey game. They're allowed to be loud. And, and he's like, but mom, they're swearing. And I'm like, listen, you've heard the words before. It's not going to kill you. You have to come neutral. Just don't let it bother you. Focus on something else. Focus on watching the game. Focus on cuddling up with me. Don't focus. Don't let this push your buttons. You got to let it go. And so as soon as we did that, he let it go. And wouldn't you know it, about two minutes later, all of a sudden, the people that were supposed to come sit next to the people to our left Um, he, he asked them, would you mind switching with our friends down there? So the people, the two people that were sitting next to my son, they went up and over a row, this really nice Mm -hmm. young couple that were really respectful of the fact that they were sitting next to kids, sat Mm -hmm. down next to him. And I I looked at him and I go, look what you just created. If you would have been sitting there seething and pissed off and, you know, and let those people affect your uh, experience that probably wouldn't have happened, but look what did happen. As soon as you release the resistance, the people next to you are happier because now they have even better seats. You're happy because you don't have to have obnoxious people next to you, and the obnoxious people are all together over to the left, and they're having a great time. <laughs> yes, Everybody's yeah. happy. Okay, so it's coming to that place of neutrality, small or big situations. Yes, because even for your daughter, as you get hooked. And you don't, and then you allow yourself to come back to that neutrality place and you don't get hooked anymore, then it's going to give her freedom. It, and you're teaching mm-hmm. her that you're, you're out of drama with her in the sense that how you feel doesn't affect me in the sense that I can still be happy whether you like him or not. Oh, got it. Yes. Yeah. It moves both of us out of that yeah. dynamic. 
of her needing to do something, quote unquote, you know, right. or me needing to do something like please her, or her please me. We don't have to please each other. We can just still be happy in our our respective selves. Yeah, because in a sense, she's controlling and manipulating you because if she shows some kind of dissatisfaction with him, then it affects you. Oh, yeah. Right. So if you become neutral, neutral to it, it takes two people to play, like you're p- playing a tennis game. If there's nobody returning the ball, it's not fun anymore. And they stop doing it. They put their racket down and go away. <laughs> right. <laughs> now, yes. My, like I had a beloved therapist who I saw for like eight years. And this is actually when I was uh, still married to my daughter's father, my ex-husband. And she used to say to me all the time, Elizabeth, step off the court, Uh, step off the tennis court. There you go. (laughs) And then the other thing she would say is, if you can see a situation with drama as if you're watching a movie, so she's creating distance there, right? Instead of being in the drama, then you're just going to get so much information from that. Right. So see if you can step out of the drama. And those are, those are two very similar things that you just said, right? Yeah. It's fantastic. Yeah, I needed to hear it today. Thank you. You're welcome. So where would you suggest that someone starts if they want to learn more about you or join one of your classes? Like, where do they find you? How do they get in touch with you? Well, you know, I do a lot of interviews and I, and for years, people would always say to me, okay, so where does someone start if they want to start applying the law of attraction, for example, or they want to start applying the universal laws, or they want to become more of an energy master? Where does someone Mm -hmm. start? And so I would always say, you need to start with your words. Because we have to watch what we say because our words are like our wand. I mean, even mm-hmm. in the Bible, it says in the beginning, there, there is the word. And our thoughts are just a compilation of words. And our thoughts create beliefs because if we think the thoughts over and over again. So it all starts with our word. And there are so many words that we say that we don't even realize that we're doing it or saying it that pulls our energy down, that keeps us in drama, that keeps us in a place of feeling powerless or in lack. And so I decided to create a couple years ago, and it's been really phenomenal, a program. It's a free program called Watch Your Words. And everybody can Mm -hmm. go to watchyourwords.com. And it's a 30-day video program. You get a video delivered every day. Some, Some of them are like a minute and a half to maybe four minutes. And it gives you the word of the day of what to change your language from and what to change it to instead and why. So that you're learning why you don't want to say this particular thing, what it's doing to your energy, to your thoughts, to your vibration, to your emotions, and what to change it to instead so that you actually feel better. You actually feel more empowered. You actually feel like you're coming from a place of choice and abundance and empowerment instead of a place of lack and limitation or drama. For example, one of them is I can't afford it. We hear this all the time and it might be true, right? But saying I can't afford this literally creates an energetic loop where your reality becomes you can't afford something. So just to even get, break that chain, saying something like, and, I, and again, I give examples of what to say instead, that's not a financial priority for me right now. And it, mm-hmm. and it becomes, I don't care if it's something in your business or something that you, a trip you want to take or something that you want to do. Um, when you say that's not a financial priority for me right now, it puts you in the decision-making seat and it helps you feel more empowered than what saying, oh, I just can't afford that. It feels so horrible to say that. And then that is the vibration of, I can't afford that you're giving out to the universe that continues to create the same thing over and over again. Mm-hmm. Definitely love that. Yeah, it's a great example. Yeah, I've used before. Um, I'm not choosing to spend my money that way. Yes. I can't afford something has the implication like I don't even have the money for that. Right. 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 And so it's like, all right, changing that into that's not a priority for me right now, then also allows the opportunity to open where the money flows in at some point where it is a priority for you. Right. 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 You can still say, I want that right now. Mm -hmm. It's not a financial priority, but I still desire that. And, you know, then I will track the money or I will do whatever to, but right here, right now to make that decision to go on that cruise or to do this or whatever, that's not a financial priority. 
Yeah, fantastic. So great. That's a great place for them to start. Yes. And then what is the link to your main website? It's christywhitman.com. And it's C-H-R-I-S-T-Y. Yes. And then Whitman with one T, W-H-I-T-M-E-N. Yeah. Any way you spell Christy Whitman, it'll get you there. Oh, fantastic. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Someone working for you there. (laughs) Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for being on the podcast. I really enjoyed our discussion today. Thank you, Elizabeth. I appreciate you having me. I really appreciate um, what you're doing in the world to help people manifest more of what they want. So thank you for your, for your help in the world. Absolutely. I hope you truly enjoyed today's episode. Remember that you can get free hypnosis downloads over at my website, drlizhypnosis.com, D-R-L-I-Z hypnosis.com. I work all over the world doing hypnosis. So if you're interested in working with me, please schedule a free consultation over at my website and we'll see what your goals are and if I can be of service to you in helping you reach them. Finally, if you liked today's episode, please subscribe to the podcast or tell a friend. That way, more and more people learn about the power of hypnosis. All right, everyone. Have a wonderful week. Peace.